let's go to the word of God. And um, I, I'm not the only one that has released books, but Elder Doug Davis from our Goldsboro location released a book called Dear Leader. And in January, Elder Dontario Wooten will release a book called The Relentless Seek. Amen. And I have one more in our Goldsboro location that's preparing to release and one more here who is finalizing a book. Um, and just stretch your hands towards our first lady and uh, tell her we need it, we need it, we need it. Amen. Amen. So this, this book, Unleash the Beast, I'm going to talk along the lines of what this book is about today. Um, and, and just to help and motivate us, let's go to Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. I want to thank you. My father always says this. Uh, thank you, Khalil. When we stand for the reading of God's word. Um, I, I want to thank you. Uh, my father always says one drop of rain will keep a hundred folk home. Uh, but I want to thank you for pressing your way pressing your way to be in the presence of God. Um, when you really love your church, you'll be there. Yeah, yeah. Don't let anything keep you home. That's one of the things we want to focus on, um, especially for our church in the new year, uh, this fluctuating attendance that we have. That one service will have 100, another service will have 125, and then today 65. Uh, we want to we wanna, uh, balance out across the board. And it's going to take commitment from all of us. All right. Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 47. I want to praise God for the unsung heroes of Mount Moriah. Let's give God praise for our adjutants, our I serve team, those who do the cleaning, those who prepare for us to enter. Give God praise for our worship team. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Our musicians, our media team. Amen. Everyone that serves in any area of ministry that does not normally get recognition, we thank God for you. I'm going to read this text from the AMJ version. Um, uh, verse 47 said, when he heard it was Jesus, he moved. You may be seated. I want to talk from the subject, jump on the moment. Uh, just tell somebody near you, jump on the moment. Yeah. I, I sincerely believe that it is my call and mandate uh, to help pull out of people what is lying dormant, yes, um, to assist people in moving past fear, um, overcoming insecurities, defeating procrastination, uh, to maximize what God has purposed for them. Anyone um, who allows me to pastor them or anyone who is close will tell you that I'm an individual that would not allow you to be regular around me. Um, if there's something in you and I can see the potential that's on the inside of you, I don't know what it is. There's something in me that feels like it is my call to help pull that out of you. Now, many do it because of the credit that it brings back to them, but I sincerely do it and have done it for years uh, because I just like to see people around me prosper. Uh, you, you, you need some people in your life who desire to see you prosper. You, you, who in your circle legitimately wants you to have better? Who, who really wants you to have more in your life? I am a firm believer. You all know it. God never brings opportunity to inactivity the easy way isn't necessarily the way there is some work you have to do in order to see manifestation in your life hmm uh, Moses I know that you're stuck here with water in front of you enemy behind you but in order for this to work you got to stretch out your rod tell your neighbor you got to do something I know you want to see a miracle take place today and you want to see resurrection power, but you got to move the stone away. Then I'll call Lazarus name. See, there is a work that we have to do. So the question then becomes, what have you accomplished this year? Here we are in December. Did you, did you stretch out your rod? What, what was it? 
What was it? What were the goals that you had? And why didn't you accomplish them? Why is the stone still there? What was it that you allowed to stop you from finishing that? What was it that you allowed to hinder you from achieving that? What held you back? What put fear in your heart? Who was it that talked you out of that? Here we are at the closing of 2023, but you're in the same place that you were at this time in 2022. Stagnation is an enemy to the mind of the potential progressive. Do not become comfortable where you are. Are y'all with me here? I said, do not become comfortable where you are. Do not fall in love with where you are. I need you to tell somebody, yes, you can. I know it sounds elementary, but, but I, I need you to encourage your neighbor who thinks that they are not equipped enough, thinks they're not good enough, thinks they're not secure enough, they, thinks they're too old or thinks they're too young or thinks they're not popular enough. I need you to tell them, yes, you can. I don't care how hard the obstacle is or how many times you have failed before. I don't care who said you couldn't or even who had legitimate reasons as to why. I'm telling you today, yes, you can. Just tell somebody around you, yes, you can. Do not allow yourself to accept mediocrity. Uh, I refuse to be average. My wife says I'm an overachiever. And uh, you, you all know it because anytime that we have to do something as a church, I'm always pushing you to go above and beyond. Uh, anything that we have to do, I'm always trying to exceed the goal. I don't want to be average. I'm allergic to average. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to be average. I, don't allow yourself to settle. Some of y'all didn't talk because y'all like to fit in with everybody else because it means less work for you. Come here, prodigal son. Come out of the pig pen. When the prodigal son realized that he's in a place that he does not have to be. When he realized that he's about to accept something that he does not have to accept. He says, I can do better than this. I want to see, is there anybody in this place today who will say, I refuse to be average. I rebuke stagnation in the name of Jesus. There is so much more that God has in store for you. Inactivity is the enemy of progress. When you understand this principle, watch this. You will be too engaged in progress to be envious and distracted by other people's success. <laughs> See, a major hindrance of personal success is many times the fact that you're too nosy. Most of us are so distracted by seeing someone else succeed that we never start reaching for success because we can't hurry to where somebody else seemingly got overnight. Tell you that, but you don't know my process. You cannot look at where someone is right now and get mad because you're not there. You don't know their process. I heard one gospel artist say that every overnight sensation took 10 years. You don't know what people had to go through to get to where they are. And you cannot be envious of what somebody else has. So touch them and say, you have an opportunity and you have to embrace process. There is something that you're going to have to go through to equip you, to better you, to develop you for the next level. I hope I'm helping somebody. You've spent too much of your life watching and waiting for stuff to work out some way, somehow, and then end up frustrated when it did not work out. But you must understand that God does not honor people who are watchers when he has called you to be a worker tell somebody i must be a worker i must be a worker yes yes i must be a worker you got to get out of that lazy mentality uh, you got to get off the bed cut off the tv cut off social media so that you can get some work done there's so much that's on the inside of you but you've allowed your distractions to keep you stagnant 
your mindset has to be every morning that you wake up today is the day that God has given me and I will never get this day back so I cannot waste this opportunity to maximize my gift hear me if you go to bed and haven't accomplished anything on that day then it should disturb you that you have been you have given up on an opportunity to improve yourself in some form Oh God, you, you should feel horrible when you go to bed and you have not sought by some means a, a way to grow, a way to expand, a way to enlarge, a way to develop, produce or increase. I can't waste a day. Let me tell you something. In 2024, stop saying, Pastor, get some rest. No, no. While, while you are sitting there resting, I'm working because I got something to accomplish. I'm trying to go somewhere and I can't get there by being stuck and stagnant. You can't waste an opportunity. Question to answer today is, when will we finally make up our mind? And we're going to see it in the text. That we are tired. Tired of being broke. Tired of being miserable. Tired of borrowing money. Tired of people seeing us struggle. Tired of living beneath our potential. Tired of dancing off stuff that we never possess. You have to start working and keep working. Stay energized. Stay excited. Stay consistent. Stay ready. Stay motivated. Stay eager. And whatever you do, don't quit. That's a problem with every week you need to pick me up. That's a problem. Every week somebody got to come pat you on the back and tell you that you're doing a good job. Where is your self-motivation? Sometimes you got to tell yourself, get up. You got to tell yourself, keep going. Tell your neighbor and don't quit. Lord, have mercy. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how hard it gets. Tell your neighbor, don't quit. I may get frustrated, I may get tired, I may cry, but I ain't going to quit. The enemy loves, he will love to see you down. He will love to see you depressed. He will love to see you broken and struggling. He loves to see you stagnant and boxed in. But shake your neighbor and say, I'm getting ready to break free. Yes, yes, yes. I'm getting ready to rise up. You, you are a sign and expected to acquire greatness. You are destined for great things. As you consider this, we must understand, and please hear me, God is ready. Now, 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 this is what I need you to understand. You ain't waiting on God. Okay. <laughs> you you you're not waiting on God because many of you say I'm waiting on the Lord to, to use as an excuse to stay where you are. You're not waiting on God. God is ready to fulfill the potential on the inside of you. God is ready. He orchestrated your presence in this place tonight because he wants you to hear his divine thoughts concerning you. God is ready. He's so ready that he is requiring you to embrace the new and exciting places that will require growth. God is ready. He is tonight trying to get you to break up with old tendencies and stop giving back to old relationships that will hurt your present and jack up your future God is ready he's ready but based upon your passionate desire to move you gotta move God is ready but you have to make up your mind that I refuse to remain stagnant I refuse to remain stagnant now when you say this you must be consistent in this which means that the hype you have for progression in January, you know, because many of y'all, you, you're going to sign up for gym membership next month. Yeah. And just like this year, you're going to waste 10 months of your income because you ain't go. Okay. Yeah, because you, 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 you signed up for gym membership in January, but you don't keep that same energy. March. July, Except you, you made all of these New Year's resolutions. How old are you? Just, just get in your mind how old you are. How many years you've been making you New Year's resolutions and by March you forgot what you said? 
God blesses your, those who are moving. One problem is we fear failing so much that we don't realize that we are currently failing because we never start. Tell your neighbor, you got to at least start. To start means you agree with God. Start means you know there's more to come. Start means God has so much more for you that just by starting, you declare to the world that your life is not under the authority to the limits prescribed by the forces of evil or people. Starting means that God has the last word, but I got to take the first step. At least start. Keep saying that you got a dream, you got a vision, and it's got dust on it right now. You haven't even started. God will meet you in your start. But tell your neighbor, you got to get started. When you embrace starting, you discover possibilities. Nothing is birth in your watching. Things only come forth in your starting. That brings us to our text. I'm not going to be long. I'm almost finished. That brings us to this text because this text talks about blind Bartimaeus. We, we know Bartimaeus. We, we've heard this story many times. Blind Bartimaeus, for those of you who don't know, is a beggar. He's blind and he sits on the side of the road begging daily. Okay, he, He's on the side of the road begging daily. Now, here's something to understand. Bartimaeus, uh, his name means son of the unseen. Okay, his name means son of the unseen. And now, now he, he, he is not on the highway side because he's just a blind beggar, but he's banned from civilization. He is banned, but not only is he banned, but he is in bondage because he's living with his daddy's baggage. All right, all right. Lord have mercy. Uh, now, now, now listen to this now. Dr. George Potts says this. He says, Timaeus' name means his daddy, Bartimaeus. Timaeus, his father. His name means honored, perfect, admirable, unclean, polluted. Okay. That, yeah, it didn't make sense to me when I first saw it either. But his name, his name says, his name means honored. Perfect, admirable, unclean, polluted. Now, y'all ain't saying nothing because, uh, but, but isn't it amazing how you got two definitions? Why y'all ain't saying? Okay, because it's, it's one is what people see in you. And the other is what God knows about you. Now you can take that how you want it because people can see the goodness on you. And God knows the nasty stuff in you. And then some people can only see the bad things about you, but God knows the potential in you. But all of us got two definitions. <laughs> all right, so the opportunity of a lifetime, <laughs> the opportunity of a lifetime only lasts during the lifetime of the opportunity. Jesus in the text is not stopping by, but he's passing by. In this text, it says that Bartimaeus, of course, is on the highway side begging. Verse 46, it says, now I need you to catch this because I always looked at this kind of different because it says, why does Mark take time to tell us, verse 46, now they came to Jericho. Then it says, the next sentence says, as they went out of Jericho, Bartimaeus comes into scripture to yell out Jesus. Okay, now why would he take time to tell us now they came to Jericho, but then tell us, and as they went out of Jericho, Bartimaeus. Now, I told you that for people like Bartimaeus, this is how they earn their living. So he had to be on the roadside begging. So I surmise now they came to Jericho. They had to walk by Bartimaeus. But it wasn't until Jesus came out of Jericho that Bartimaeus said something. Can I tell you something? Procrastination is the grave in which opportunity is buried. Because many of you have allowed opportunity to pass by you the first time. That's why you're stuck. That's why you're still where you are. Because you haven't said anything yet. Oh God. Ooh, look at y'all face here. Because many of you understand that you are still where you are because you procrastinated. 
Okay, I, I, when I'm on the road, I use this example here. I say, you know, it's like your car. Because right now, many of you, your car dirty. First of all, it's dirty. The outside's dirty. The inside, you got chicken bones, sunflower seeds, cups, trash everywhere. You know why? Because you went out this week and said, I'm going to clean out my car. Open the door and saw how dirty it was and said, I'll do it tomorrow. Procrastination is something small, but it grows into something big because now you're saying, I'm going to go back to school, fall, I'm going to go back to school, spring, I'm going to go back to school, fall, I'm going to go back to school, spring. And here you are three years down the road and you could have been almost finished by now. <laughs> you got you to you watch out for procrastination. Jesus, Jesus is not stopping by, he's passing by. Jesus is on his way to Calvary and you only have a short window of opportunity for your life to change. Can I tell you that God will give you the opportunity to change your life. Woo! Lord, have mercy. God will give you opportunity when you don't have time to get yourself together for it. Lord, have mercy. You won't even see it coming. <laughs> yes, Lord. Now, watch this now because this is the focus of our text on today. Verse 47 says, when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he shouted. When he heard it was Jesus, he moved. When he heard it was Jesus, he cried out. When he heard. It was Jesus. See, at this point, I surmise that Bartimaeus is finally tired. Because many of us are still stuck where we are because we're tired but not tired enough. Come here, John 5, help me preach here. Because in John 5, uh, the man by the pool of Bethesda, he's there 38 years. And Jesus says to him, let me ask you a question, man. Do you even want to be made whole? The man gave Jesus excuses. He says, I ain't got nobody to put me in the pool when the water is troubled. How many excuses have you given God? Jesus says to him, do you even want to be made whole? I believe that Jesus asked him the question in that manner because he's saying, if you've been sitting here 38 years with the answer in front of you, why haven't you jumped in? Why haven't you found a way to get in the water? Y'all ain't saying nothing, but I've said it to you before. Because you come week after week, Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, impact after impact, revival after revival, and here an opportunity to get in the pool, and you're still stuck. And Jesus says, do you, why y'all get quiet? You, you, do you even want to be made whole? Bartimaeus evidently got tired of where he is. Here in this position daily. Experiencing the same thing over and over and over again. How many years will you go in the same cycles? Huh? You ought to make up your mind that in 2024 you ain't going to be complaining about gas prices. You, you, that, that got to be some change somewhere. 2024, I ain't going to be renting no more. I'm going to be owning. So, there's got to be a change somewhere. Nothing changing, nothing getting better. Here's Bartimaeus. Watch this. Here's one thing that I saw. He's blind. So every day somebody had to help him get to that place. His company made sure that he got to this place daily to beg. Can I tell you something? Be careful when those around you don't mind keeping you where you are. Lord, because why you won't help me grow? Why you won't help me mature? Why you can't help me advance? Why you can't help me change? You just laugh and co-sign where I am or downplay when I talk about my potential. You got to survey your circle and watch how they are excelling but keep you by the side of the road. Now, while we're getting on your company, let me tell you this. Many of you, the reason you're still stuck is because you are out of control. <laughs> you are out 
of control. Now, I thought about this because that was actually what I was going to preach today. You're out of control. But I, I thought about this because, you know, many of us are stuck right now where we are. Watch this. Because you can't control you. <laughs> when it's time to be consistent, you can't keep yourself consistent. When it's time to be disciplined, you can't keep your... Okay. When it's time to say no, you say yes. It's you that can't control. You are out of control. You can't control. There's nobody to blame for some of us. There's no, it's not our friends. It's not our family. We are the reason. We're out of control. Now, text says, when he heard, he moved. When he, when he heard, he, he shouted. When he heard, he cried out. When he heard, faith cometh by hearing. But the question is, what did you hear? This is why you have to watch your surroundings. Because many of you have faith in the wrong thing because you're hearing the wrong thing. Lord have mercy. You have faith in people who said you can't. You have faith in people who said you're not. You have faith in people who said you won't. But faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What does God have to say? You listen to your family. You listen to your friends. You listen to those fake folk in your life. But what does God have to say about your future? What does God have to say about your potential? What does God have to say? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I'm getting out of here. Verse 47. He heard Jesus of Nazareth. Kenzel, watch this. He heard Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. But he calls him Jesus, thou son of David. <laughs> he heard Jesus of Nazareth, but he calls him Jesus, thou son of David. Tell your neighbor, I can't be average. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I, I got to go after more. I got to excel beyond this point because Bartimaeus is the only one that calls him by the highest reference that the Jewish people have for the Messiah. They said Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He said, Jesus, thou son of David. I can't be like everybody else. I got to go and sail beyond this point. Touch your name and say, I can't be average. He says, Jesus, thou son of David. So this blind man can see Jesus better than those who are walking with him. Lord have mercy he yells out and calls him the highest reference that the Jewish people have for the Messiah he says Jesus thou son I want to ask you a question how do you see him because how you see him determines how you shout how you see him determines how you move how you see him determines how you make the next step ask your neighbor how do you see him I see him as the one that's going to take me from now to the future I see him as the one that's going to open doors give me opportunity give me more than enough y'all ain't shouting with me ask your neighbor how do you see him watch this he cries out Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me and the text says many charged him and said be quiet Lord have mercy they said be quiet now tell your neighbor say neighbor I'm only loud because you're quiet Okay, I told you that his shout represented his moving. The only reason you're upset with my movement and what I, the fruit that I get from my movement is because you ain't moving. Don't get mad at me for my shout. You don't, you don't need what I need. And so I got to shout. I got to move until I get everything that I need from him. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, I will shout louder. I dare you to holler. Yes, sir. The more you try to shut me up, the louder I will become. The more you talk about me, the more I'm a move. The more you scandalize my name, the more books I'm a write. The more you say what you got to say, the more degrees I'm gonna get. Tell somebody you can't shut me down. I'll. Sh I got to 
Sunday. Get out of here. I'm not supposed to hoot today. Now, now, verse 49 says, now I need you to catch this. Because it's not just your holler. It's the act of your holler. And maybe it's not really the act of your holler. But the faith that you put behind your holler. Oh, God. And this hit me hard this morning. Because there's some things I'm believing God for. For this church. Now, I told somebody recently. I said, everything that Mount Moriah has done. There has never been a time where I set out to do something and said, this ain't going to work. No, no, no. It's the faith behind the move. When I step out and say, Mount Moriah, we're going left. It's because I believe when we turn left, God's going to be there. If I say, Mount Moriah, we're going right. I believe when we turn right, God's going to be there. Hit your neighbor and say, I got faith for this. I don't believe I'm going to lose. I don't believe I'm going to be defeated. I am a winner. And failure for me is not an option. Woo! Lord have mercy. Now, verse 50 says, and we're closing. Verse 50 says that, watch this. Watch this, Jairus. Verse 50 says that, well, let's back up a little bit because verse 49, when he shouted, Jesus stood still. Lord, have mercy. When he shouted, his move was so powerful. His shout was so full of faith that Jesus stood still. I'm trying to tell you, he's not going to bless you for being a watcher. When you start moving, watch him. Watch yourself get his attention. Tell him I got to get his attention. I got to get his attention. There's too much that I need from him. And when I shout, when I move, I'm going to watch him stand still. And the text says, he called for him. He he called for him. He, he, he said, bring him to me. So, the ones that told him to be quiet had to say, he's calling for you. Lord, have mercy. Touch your name and say, you better believe in me now. No, no, no. I heard what you said behind closed doors. I heard what you texted about me. But you better believe in me now. Because when I get there, okay, don't worry about it. I'll hire you. Okay. When I get there, I'll help you up. When I get there, I'll give you a hand up. Keep on talking about me now. But you're going to have to help me. Because God said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. Grab somebody's hand and say, neighbor, you better believe now. Now, watch this. Verse 50 says, he threw off everything and went to Jesus. He, he threw off everything and went to Jesus. Now, first thing is this. He threw off everything. What is it that you need to throw off? What is it on your life? that's keeping you from getting to Jesus is it fear is it procrastination is it anxiety is it depression whatever it is that's keeping you from getting to Jesus in this season you need to let it go pull it off of your life pull it off of your mind pull it off of your spirit now the text says he pulls it off and goes to Jesus how does a blind man Pull off everything and go to Jesus. Hit your neighbor and say, we walk by faith and not by sight. I don't know if he's right here, but faith says move. I don't know if he's going to be right there, but faith says move. If you move by faith, you'll take a step and see nothing in front of you. But by the time your foot hits the ground, God will put solid ground under it got to get out of here watch this verse 51 verse 51 and I got a problem with Bartimaeus here because text says when he gets to Jesus Jesus says Kaylin what do you want okay 
Now, Jesus can see he's blind. So he already know what he wants. But Jesus says, what do you want? My problem with Bartimaeus is that he says, I want to see. No, bro. He gave you a blank check. Ask for everything. Okay. All right. <laughs> Watch this. But here's the thing. Here's the thing you got to catch about Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus says, I want to receive my sight because his mindset was if you let me see, I'll earn my own living. Okay. Because <laughs> God is looking for workers in this season. <laughs> He's ready to give you fruit, but he wants to see you work. <laughs> Bartimaeus said, just give me my sight. <laughs> I'll handle it from here. Jesus, Jesus says to him, he says to him, what do you want? In other words, he gave him a blank check because his faith was so strong to get his attention. I'm going to speak that over this house. That in this next season, God's giving you a blank check. <laughs> Whatever you want, God says, I'll grant it to you. <laughs> Whatever you need, God says, I'll make it happen. <laughs> Grab your neighbor's hand and say, I got a blank check. My opportunity. Now, I'm closing. Last verse is verse 52. Verse 52 says, Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Bartimaeus, what do you want? I just want to see. Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Whole means completing all parts and aspects. Nothing left out. You ask for sight. But because your faith was so strong, Jesus says, I'm fixing everything. Lord, have mercy. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, when I leave the sanctuary today, he's going to give me more than I ever expected. Is there anybody in the house today that can open your mouth and shout till you get his attention? Shout until he stands still. Shout. Bust the move. By faith, we let it out of our mouth. But can I tell you something? When you leave the sanctuary, you got to move. Research. Start the business. Go back to school. Write the book. Cut the album. Produce what you need to produce. Whatever God has put on the inside, now is the time. I said, now is the time. Now is the time. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Grab your neighbor and say, now. Do it now. I dare to push somebody and say, move. Push somebody else and say, move. Move. Do something. You've been stagnant long enough. It's time to shift. You've been sitting here begging long enough. It's time for more. Mount Moriah, hear your pastor today. You can't be attached to me and fail. The devil is a lie. I'm a winner. And failure for me. And you is not an option. Tell somebody I'm going higher. Yeah. Grab somebody. Just give me two minutes and say, neighbor, it's my time now. It's my time now. You talking about you waiting on your season. You were created in him before the foundations of the earth. So when you were born, it became your season. Your season is now. Now you have an opportunity. If you're alive, now is the time. Move. Despite the obstacles.
obstacles. Move despite fear. Move. I ain't got the money. Move anyway. If you trust God and tell God, I'm going to take the next step. Order my steps in your word. Dear Lord, lead me. Me every day. Tell somebody he'll order your steps. He got you covered by faith. You got to move by faith. You got to shout. One thing is for sure I'm tired of being stuck. I'm tired of being here. Push somebody and say, Move. you hear my heart I pray you hear my heart but there's so many of you with so much potential on the inside when you go to the grave you got to go to the grave empty when you get to heaven you gotta tell God I maximize everything you put in me I did what I could while I was alive grab your neighbor and say neighbor don't waste this And your faith will produce. I said your faith will produce. Bartimaeus didn't shout. Bartimaeus didn't strip himself. Bartimaeus didn't run to Jesus and receive nothing. But he got fruits for his moving. I come to tell you, you're going to see some fruit if you just move some fruits if you just start some fruits if you just go go tell three people move now Here's what I need you to do. That's what God just said. Be seated. Grab your pen. <laughs> Grab your paper. Grab your phone. Whatever you use to take notes. Here's what God says. He says, Tonight, with a new mindset, you set a new goal list. Yeah. I want you to write it out. Watch this. Don't do what you normally do and write down things you know you can accomplish. I want you to write down the hard thing. What you're believing God for. What your goals are. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Right now, while you're writing, you're on the roadside. You're on the roadside like Bartimaeus. While you're writing, you're on the roadside. <laughs> yes, sir. Write down those goals, those dreams, those aspirations, what you're believing to come to pass. One thing is for sure, you have to refuse to be in this place the same spot December 2024 write it down write it down write it down you're on the roadside but I believe God's getting ready to give you roadside service 
I said, I believe God's getting ready to give you roadside service. Now that you've written out what you're believing God for, shout. Come on. Is that all you got? That's how you're going to get his attention? Shout. 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 He's coming to see about you. He's going to stop in his tracks and meet your need. Shout. Come on, Matt Mariah. Open your mouth. I will not be in the same place. Not even next December, January. I will not be in the same place that I'm in right now. If you believe it, shout. 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 Woo. This time tonight is different from any other vow that you've made to God or to yourself this time tonight is different watch this Bartimaeus I don't know if he was a quiet man before but the passion the drive the desire that he had for something better made him unleash the beast and start hollering <laughs> Lord have mercy he hollered so loud that it started scaring people around him to the point where they turned around and told him to be quiet I want to know how powerful will your shout be how aggressive will you be in this season how passionate will you be in this season how much zeal will you have for the next season God says you can't go into this next season like you handle last seasons. This time, whatever's on the inside that makes you go after it, that spikes your adrenaline. That there's, a, there's, a, there's a proverb about if something happens to a child, if it's stuck under a car, no matter how skinny the mother is, she will find the energy and the strength to pick the car up off of her child. I want to know, do you feel that way about your destiny? Because depression and anxiety and fear and procrastination is sitting on your destiny. But I pray that the passion and the beast on the inside makes you pick it up. I dare you by faith just throw it off throw it off your destiny is at stake your passion is at stake your future is at stake just throw it nothing is going to stop me in the next season do more do more Stop writing down goals that you know you can achieve by yourself. One writer says, attempt something so great that it is doomed for failure unless God be in it. Yeah. Attempt something so great that it is doomed for failure unless God be in it. This is not the time to play it safe. <laughs> hey, everyone's standing. I'm done. Hallelujah. Jump on the moment. When Bartimaeus heard it was Jesus, he said, this is my opportunity. And he jumped on the moment. My prayer is that every member of this church, every person who's attending today, that you take advantage of this opportunity. I don't know if you heard me or not, but I told you, you're not waiting on your season. 
you were created in him before the foundations of the world. So when you were born, it was your time to be born, which means it became your season. If you are alive, this is your opportunity. You don't get another chance. This is your opportunity. You got to move now. You got to do it now. You got to have faith now. Step out on faith and watch God meet you at your point of need. We're getting ready to pray. Hey. Glory. I need you to give God one more shout. Come on. With everything that's within you. Come on. One more shout. Yep. This shout says, I'm ready to work. This shout says, just give me an opportunity. This shout says, I'm going to take this chance now. This shout says, I'm not going to mess up this time. This shout says, thank you, God. You looked beyond my thoughts and saw my need and gave me an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And you shall be productive. I said you shall produce. Something is going to come out of it this time. Woo! If you believe that I dare to give God praise. I feel something creeping up on me. I dare to give God praise. God wants you to mature to the place that you move whenever you see the opportunity. Don't wait. Move now. I dare you by faith, just start moving. Just start moving. Just start moving. While you're moving, God is crushing procrastination. While you're moving, he's crushing the lazy spirit. While you're moving, he's crushing anxiety, crushing fear, crushing depression, crushing anything that tries to stagnate your faith. While you're moving, God is crushing it. Now shout. It's going to work this time. I said it's going to work this time. You want to see fruit this time. You want to see fruit this time. It's going to work. In your favor. I'm moving, but we got to seal this thing. I need some praisers. I said, we got to seal this thing. We got to seal this thing. We got to seal it. I dare to give God a praise, right? No, no, no. In this next season, we don't need y'all that got to warm up to it. Give God glory right here. Praise him.
neighbor. I'm not making any apologies for where I go in the next season. Tell them December 17th, 2023 is the day I decided to get off the road side. I refuse to be stuck. While you're dancing, there goes another business open. While you're shouting, there goes another tax bracket. While you're giving God praise, here comes more employment. While you're blessing him, there goes more fruit. While you're giving him glory, here comes more money. I'm moving. From winning to owning. I'm moving from being the borrower to being the lender. I'm moving from being the bottom to being the top. I'm and I make no apology. And I make no apology. the shout, you have to move. There's no need for you to hear this word tonight. Ain't no need for you to buy the book. It collect dust and you're still stuck next year. After you leave this place tonight, now you have to move. Because God does not bring opportunity He's got to see you working. He's got to see you moving. He's got to see you doing something. If you want to start the business, at least start doing the research. At least apply to go back to school. God's got to see you at least start. And he'll meet you in your start. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the challenge. Thank you for the push. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for direction tonight. We needed to hear from you. Father, we rebuke stagnation now. Everything that's tried to keep us bound, keep us stuck, we rebuke it now. Help us to move forward. Unleash the passion, the drive, the zeal that's on the inside so we can accomplish more in this next season. In the name of Jesus, unleash the beast within us, God. That thing on the inside that helps us to push through whatever we're facing. Helps us to go despite our hurt, despite our pain, despite us being without. Help us to move forward anyway. In the name of Jesus. I speak to that person who was on the verge of giving up, God, that you restore strength, restore joy, restore virtue. And then someone needed to hear this word tonight, God. But then let us walk in this word after this day. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen.